Chinese electric car company NextEv just hired former Cisco exec Pad Mastery Warrior as its U.S. CEO. I asked her into the TechCrunch studios to talk about her plans for the future and this surprising career shift. This is your first venture into the automotive industry. Uh, this is your first gig at a startup. Why now and why did they hire you? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, I mean, for me, I was looking for something to do, very different to do. When I left Cisco, as I say, I don't want to do the same job twice. I didn't want to go as a C-level executive to another large Fortune 100 company, um, a global company. I was looking for something new where I can build something from the ground up and make it big, right? You know, I have a lot of experience scaling things, uh, but I wanted to experience starting something and taking it to scale. So I was looking for a, a startup and a startup with a mission to have a big impact in, in some area applying technology. Um, so when I came across Next TV, I felt like this is a big problem, you know, that exists about pollution and cars being a big factor in that. And how can we apply technology to change that? And so that's what attracted me to them. Your name came up among the Twitter board from what we heard. Uh, did you ever consider that position or were you interested in that position for a while? So I announced I was leaving Cisco in June. I actually left Cisco in September. I left on September 15. I considered lots of CEO roles, you know, big companies, small companies, startups. I considered venture capital being a partner at a VC firm because I was doing investments at Cisco. Um, I looked at bigger companies. I literally looked at every option. And, you know, they're all great opportunities, great companies. But what ultimately what I was really passionate about is really taking on a big challenge. I basically narrowed it down to, you know, I considered being a VC, as I said before, if I were to do a startup or if I were to join a startup, what would be the spaces that would interest me? And I, was, I sort of narrowed it down to transportation or education. I think those are the two areas that I felt where technology is still on the periphery and have a lot of opportunity to integrate it more and, and change the, you know, to change the domain fundamentally. And so those were the two I was looking at when I met William, so it worked out. And also it's a Shanghai-based company. Mm -hmm. You're the US CEO mm -hmm. and also the chief digital officer globally. Mm -hmm. Do I chief have that development question? officer. Development officer mm -hmm. globally. And how's that going to work because this is an international company how is that going to work together? Yeah, you know, actually, this is one of the reasons that I was attracted to the company. It's taking globalization to the next level in the sense that companies usually get started somewhere and then they go into a, a global market. And it always is a problem because you already built a product for a certain market and then trying to adapt it into a different market is always harder. Um, this company is starting from the get go uh, with, you know, competence from China, where there's a lot of manufacturing expertise, supply chain expertise, a lot of the suppliers are there, you know, a lot of the building aspects of the car are established in China. And that's why the company is in Shanghai. We have a design team in Munich. You know, European design is clearly one of the best in, in the world. And so leveraging that capability and Silicon Valley for its advanced technology. So that's the thinking. Um, is it complex? Yeah, I think it will be you know, a challenge to kind of have distributed teams. But I've managed global teams my entire career. So actually, that's one of the reasons they are hiring me is because the engineering and development team is going to be distributed. And I'll be responsible to lead leading that effort in addition to being the CEO for the US company. From what I understand, they, uh, they, the, the company wants to go into China first to mm -hmm. consumers in China first. How committed are you to bringing it stateside and how soon will we see that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a global company and we are going to look at global markets. The China market is huge and is growing very fast. China actually surpassed the US in terms of number of new cars sold in 2009. It is the biggest market. There's a lot of government incentives for the shift to happen to electric vehicles. So the time is right for us to be in the market in China. So that's the priority. Hmm. Now, I also hear that you drive a Tesla. I do. Yeah, a Tesla Model S. Yes. Yeah. Um, did that influence you in any way in joining up an electric vehicle company from your personal experience? Yes, absolutely. You know, I love my Tesla. I drive it, but I also know that it would be very difficult to drive my Tesla in China or in India, where I grew up in India, and I travel back and forth quite a lot. 
Um, so it's great in California. You know, I, I, the, I enjoy the ride. Uh, and I really admire Tesla and Elon for what they've done with the electric vehicle. Having said that, I feel like there is a whole big market segment that's not addressed. And so that's, that's why I'm motivated to go address that market. When uh, Next Step does eventually come to the U.S., what's your plan to stand out? You know, I think competition is always good, right? Because the more companies there are, it actually moves the supply base. And the supply base becomes uh, big enough where costs come down. And so the more, com I think that's a good thing in the industry. Because if there's only one or two niche players, uh, costs always remain high because the supply base is not there. Um, and so it's good to have lots of companies entering the space. The automotive market is a big market. You know, there's, it's never a single company that dominates that market. And this has been true for the last hundred years because a vehicle is such a specific thing. And there's a lot of personalization that happens in it. Uh, you know, I think the way we think about Next EV is not just a car company. It's sort of, if you think about how as a user, as a consumer, your relationship with the brand, it's pretty much non-existent today in the automotive industry because of the dealerships and the dealer system that's been set up, which had to be set up when the automotive industry started 100 years ago. And now we're in the mobile internet era. There's a unique way you as a user can connect with the brand. Do you plan to deploy just like uh, the, the Tesla model and instead of going through dealers? to write to the consumer? I think we look at all options. I think absolutely, if you're building a company today, you don't really, I mean, you look at how do you leverage the technology like the mobile internet to distribute and get access to the customers, right? And so, which is what Tesla did. But Tesla also started in 2004 before the mobile internet. Why should engineers come work for you instead of Elon Musk? You know, I think the engineers will come to work for us, for the company, because the company is really looking at a very different business model. You know, I think the, the volumes we are going to look at, the markets we are going to address are much more global. Um, it's not either or. I think there is space for lots of different companies in this, in this market. The market is so huge. If you think about, if you're an automotive engineer and you worked in that industry, Fundamentally, this is a way to apply your expertise in a very new way. Uh, if you're a mobile engineer or you're a data scientist, it's an, you know, another, how many mobile apps can you write, right? You know, it's, it's a different, you take that skill set and think about the technology in the car as a platform. It's the same thing, but applied in a very different space. So that's why engineers would come to work in the space. Uh, now, uh, why would they come to work for us as opposed to any other EV company? Uh, I think the reason they would come to work for us is, first of all, we're a global company. And second of all, we're going to create a culture that really allows people to perform to the best of their you know, ability. Elon is revered among engineers. How do you tend, uh, how do you expect to out recruit him? In that I space? think there's enough talent out there that'll come into this industry. And Elon's great, he's very inspirational. Tesla is a great company, so is Google, so is Apple. You know, we all exist in coexist in the Valley. And you know, it's not just, the, it's not like there's a fixed talent pool in the Valley that all circulates, right? People from outside the Valley can come into the Valley and this is what we want to go do. Bloomberg had mentioned that uh, you'd raised about half a billion of the billion that NextDev is looking to raise. Is that is that true? Is that the... Yeah, the target um, raised for the company is a billion dollars and we've roughly raised about half of that. Okay. And, and what do you plan to do with that in the next, just the next year, next little bit? So next year, my priority here in the U.S. is ramp the company up. You know, we want to hire 400 people in the next 12 months. So as soon as I leave here, I'm going to start recruiting people and, you know, invitation to anyone who's a great cat talent to come work for us. Uh, that's my first priority. We're going to, you know, have a product concept. We'll start executing on the product concept. All right. Thanks so much for speaking with us today. Thank you so much. Yeah.